go. Now recording. All right. Well, I think John, we lost everybody. He didn't want to be recorded. Yeah. <laughs> he wants to be uh, anonymous. So anyway, so I'm going to go over kind of the the main points of the of this tribulation period, dealing with the trumpets and the bowls. So remember the, the opening or, or the breaking of the seven seals, right, marks the beginning of this seven-year tribulation. And uh, since there's no judgments described with the opening of the seventh seal, right, so each of the seals had a judgment, but the seventh one, uh, what really happens is the, the seventh one, uh, there's judgments that follow immediately. And it kind of seems like the events of the seventh seal consist uh, of the seven trumpets. So we got judgment, judgment, six of them with the seals. And then the seventh one really opens into the judgments, okay? Or the, rather the, the seven trumpets. And then the seventh and final trumpet judgment uh, doesn't really describe just one specific judgment as the other six trumpets, but really signifies the whole part of the tribulation program of, of God's wrath that will really at the end bring the kingdom of God and the return of Christ. Okay, so you got the seven seals, the seven seal opens the trumpets, you have the trumpets, then the final one kind of magnifies the whole thing. So the judgment themselves, which make up the seventh trumpet and really accomplishes the victory uh, described back in chapter 11 are the seven bowl judgments. Okay. Well, stop me if you're confused. But... I'm confused. Sorry. <laughs> the seventh I... seal opens the seven <laughs> trumpets. The seventh trumpet opens the bowls. Okay. So the bowls are contained within the trumpets, which are contained. Uh, well, the bowls are contained within the seventh trumpet, and the trumpets are contained within the seventh seal. Okay, think of it this way. Remember the, you know, those Russian dolls, right? So it's a doll, and then you open it, and there's another doll, and you open it, and there's another one, right? Yeah. It's kind of in that sense. The seventh one actually opens up a whole new, but they're still part of that. If that helps. Okay, so essentially the seven bold judgments, uh, which are sometimes called the seven plagues, are the last ones. So the seven bulls are the seventh trumpet, and they basically spell out the seventh trumpet, which consists of the, the way of its, by, by way of judgments. Okay. I know it's all confusing. So... There's a uh, great deal of similarities, and I'm sure you've already noticed, in the judgments of the trumpets and the bowls, okay? So in both, the first series uh, deal with the earth. Uh, the second series deals with the sea. The, second, the third series of judgment deal with the rivers and, and the fountain of waters. And the fourth series deals with the sun. And then with the fifth series, the fifth one deals with darkness. And the sixth one is going to deal with uh, Euphrates, which is a major body of water. And then the seventh series deals with lightning, thunders, and earthquakes. Right? So... Uh, when we study these two sections, uh, it's going to reveal some striking differences. Even though it sounds like the same things are happening again and again, okay? You know, all that destruction, and then you go, wow, there's more destruction, more destruction, okay? There are some differences. All right? And I'm going to give you the, uh, the differences. The first is that the, the first four trumpets deal only with one-third of the earth. Remember? Only one-third of the earth got 
Okay. Um, so the, the first four trumpets deal with one third of the earth, while the bold judgments are universal in scope. They include the entire earth. The bowls are also much greater in intensity, as well as uh, the degree of co coverage and effect. So even though they sound like the same thing, they're much more intense. Whereas before you heard about the earthquakes, right? One third of the, the planet. Well, now we're going to hear about these earthquakes that are going to be really bad. Okay, and then the third thing about the third difference is that they they fall quickly. Again, they're bowls as like it's almost like a liquid being poured out. They're in rapid succession. Okay, so basically, uh, it's best to see the bowls as different from the trumpet judgments. Trumpet judgments happen, so even though they sound the same. The first one really only happened to a third of the world, and they were minor in comparison to now these bold judgments are going to be. And even though they're the same thing, but now it encompasses the whole earth, and they're definitely a lot more severe. And where the first trumpets happened over a period of time, these are going to happen like immediately. All right. Now, let me get some water. These last seven judgments that we're gonna read about. Seven more? Yeah, there's seven more. There's like no, 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 like no <laughs> head in sight. Right, that's, um, what I'm, that's what I'm preparing yeah. you for it. I'm preparing you for it. <laughs> that's kind of bad, you know, we're just humans, man. You know what I mean? Uh, mm -hmm. It's gracious. Yeah, well, you, you haven't heard anything. <laughs> we, we raped, you know, like, yeah, I don't understand. <laughs> Exactly. It's too much this this violence, man. And remember, the whole thing is seven years, so yeah. it's like, again, the first part, one third. Now it's the big one, okay. But what we're going to see is that these judgments are going to cause further hardening of the hearts of the people, okay. You don't think? Yeah, they're remember the plagues, <laughs> and they have much of the same results. Uh, of the plagues had on Egypt. Remember that? Remember as the plagues happened, the Bible kept saying Pharaoh's heart became harder and harder. So, so these plagues are going to show, first of all, that the total rebellion and independence of people from the Lord. And so because of the callousness and the hardness that's going to be built up in the heart of men, these judgments are going to result in, in anger and blasphemy, uh, really even from the mouths of, of, the, of the people on earth, rather than fear and reverence. So as things get worse and worse, they hate God more and more, rather than saying, we, you know, we give up, we repent, Lord God, save us. They actually become worse and worse. So these are our hardening plagues, which God uses really to his glory. And then secondly, uh, these plagues or bold judgments as they're called, are gonna really, at the end, at the end of the day, they're gonna crush human rebellion and remove all uh, rebellion from earth. So the completion will be the accomplishment of the return of Christ and his, with, with his armies, okay? So, are you ready? Let me ask you one thing. But yeah. We haven't got to the point where Christ comes. We're got no, where he comes back yet. But this, this will be the last set of judgments before the return of Christ. And then when he comes, more. Well, we'll see. But actually, uh, it's going to be quick. It's going to be like uh, like a guillotine. Mass, mass, <laughs> mass, mass quick. Yeah. So here we go, the uh, bowl number one, which deals with <laughs> sores, right? Verse number one says, Then I heard a loud voice from the temple telling the seven angels, Go and pour out the on the earth the seven bowls of the wrath of God. 
So the first angel went and poured out his bowl on the earth, and harmful and painful sores came upon the people who bore the mark of the beast and worshipped the image. Oh, so this first bowl is really a, a direct hit on all of those who are worshipping the beast. Uh, these are the people who have flatly refused eternal salvation offered by God because all they wanted really was worldly pleasures. And these sores are similar to the ones upon the Egyptians in Exodus. Okay. Verse 3 is the second bowl. The second angel poured out his bowl into the sea, and it became like blood of a corpse. And every living thing died that was in the sea. So here it's a very graphic picture, and it literally really reads, literally, in the Greek it says, and the sea became blood as of a dead man. Okay? So the, the image is kind of a, a dead man wallowing in his own blood. It says that every living thing or sea creatures uh, in the sea are going to die. So here again, this judgment is a universal, it's a global catastrophe in the ocean. Verse 4, the third angel poured out his bowl into the rivers and the springs of water, and they became blood. So this means that fresh water, which is you know absolutely necessary, uh, even for short-term survival, uh, is, is going to be suddenly extremely scarce. So, you know, some people obviously will have bottled water and, and stored reservoirs and stuff, but everyone on earth will know that they're in the, in the process of being killed. I mean, the water supply is being poisoned. Verse 5, And I heard the angel in charge of the water say, Just are you, O Holy One, who is and was, for you brought these judgments for they have shed the blood of the saints and the prophets and you have given them blood to drink it is what they deserve so these are uh, these apostate rebellious people remember they had slain and shed the blood of believers so they had gone on a mass killing spree of all the believers on earth and so now the saints are crying back and saying, what you're doing is just, okay? This is their, I guess, just rewards. So they're, they're receiving a uh, punishment that's fitting to the nature of their crime. Verse seven says, and I heard the altar saying, yes, Lord, God almighty, true and just are your judgments. So really, the tribulation is going to show that God is a God of holiness and he's acting justly in his judgment against sin. Because even as terrible as all this sounds, what the people have done is even worse. So the people that are really receiving this uh, kind of, you know, they are reaping what they sowed. Let's put it that way. So in the fourth bowl, now in verse 8, says the fourth angel poured out his bowl on the sun and it was allowed to scorch people with fire and they were scorched by the fire by the fierce heat of uh -oh, global warming and they cursed the name of God who had power over these plagues and they didn't repent and give him glory so some think that it's possible that uh, it isn't a change, a, a change in the sun itself, but it's a change in our atmosphere, uh, which might somehow lose the ability to block harmful ultra -ray violet, ultraviolet rays, right? Or cosmic rays or radiation, because right now we have a layer around the earth that protects us, the sun. If that's gone, the sun will cook us. And that's what it sounds like here. So the people here. What's that? 
There's, there's no escaping that. That's it. That will be in the end. That will, that will be the you won. Boom. It's over. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's not again. Checkmate. Checkmate. Check you're done. That will be everybody. Literally. Yeah, I mean, you would have to go outside only at night. And I wonder, who are these people that are so evil? I, mm -hmm. The only people that I can think that actually are this evil are politicians. Because <laughs> you're a normal, everyday person, you know what I mean? For yeah. the most part, you know, a regular human being, you know, God in their life or not, but... Like no one's committing all these atrocities of evil. Mm -hmm. uh, like if we use that gauge now, the biggest producers of evil in this country are our politicians yeah. worldwide. Yeah. Literally. Yeah, and also a lot of again, I'm reading, you know, I'm reading a book now talking about the uh, the elites who are trying to create this new world order. Uh, and so you do have people who really want to control everybody else. And, you know, if you think back in the time of kings and queens and guillotines, as they say, you know, you had the, the reigning elites and their lives were the only thing that mattered. And they used people, pawns, and everybody's life was miserable except them. And everybody else had to live to make them comfortable. And that's... That's a form of evil right there. And that's what you're going to yeah. see in the end days where it's going to be just, you know. Again, we're seeing that now, though. Yeah. We're seeing that, that disparity of elites and your, your yeah. regular common folk. Well, think about the atrocities that um, Hamas did to uh, Israel, to that, that area where they just came in and literally cut off heads of, of babies and raped the women and killed them and just massacred people. I mean, you have to have a level of, of evil yeah, yeah. to do that. Sure. Because, I mean, you could hate uh, a group of people or you can be anti somebody, but when you see a child and you, you're okay with cutting their heads off or choking them to death or raping a four-year-old girl, now you're, you're talking about another level of evil. Yeah. Where it says they refuse to repent and glorify, if they choose to repent and glorify, can they still be saved right now? I believe so. Okay. I believe it so. It sounds like it. That's what, that's how I read that, but just wondering. Right. Even if they took the mark? Well, that's the thing is, can they? Yes, but will they? No. Yeah. Okay. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, at this point, it's the same thing. Pharaoh could have repented at any point and let the people of Israel go and wouldn't have suffered all that things. His army wouldn't have been destroyed. His whole kingdom wouldn't have come down. But at every turn, he rather than repenting, he got harder and worse and worse and worse and worse until his final destruction. And that's basically what's going to happen here towards the end. So now you've got the the scorching heat, and with bowl number five, there's darkness. And verse 10 says, a fifth of the, angel, the fifth angel poured out his bowl on the throne of the beast. But notice this one's on the throne of the beast, and its kingdom was plunged into darkness, and people gnawed their tongues in anguish. So it's so bad on earth that people are, are you know, so now suddenly at this point in, in the tribulation, a judgment of darkness is poured out on the beast's throne, okay? The very place of, of his rule, and neither Satan nor uh, the beast, this man, can alleviate this judgment. So this darkness will cause people to be in despair and, and certainly frightful, okay? Which is interesting because Jesus is the light of the world, and here you got the beast, uh, the other ones, and they're all in, in this literal darkness. Now, uh, nobody that I've, most, some of the commentators that I read and studied didn't say this, but it, 
it felt to me, right, as I was reading this, that it, it, it does sound like a nuclear war. Uh, I mean, if we go back on it, imagine a nuclear war right now, right? With all the countries that have nuclear weapons. So all of a sudden now you've got uh, the destruction of the sea. You got destruction of fresh water because of the radiation and all the, the nuclear waste, right? It's going to destroy that. The ozone layer being destroyed in scorching heat. You have the aftermath creating this darkness all on the earth. I mean, as I was reading it, it almost felt like this was some kind of nuclear weapon, nuclear war that we went out. Because if we had a nuclear war, I think that's exactly what would happen to the earth. Anybody agree, disagree, see something different? Oh, sounds like that, and and uh, you, you know, U.S. Uh, blowing up pipelines in Russia does only makes it uh, like, hey, you know, let's engage in this, mm -hmm. which is crazy. Uh, they say that this is the closest time that uh, nuclear has been talked about uh, globally. You know, yeah. Like, yeah. So. Yeah, one of the uh, one of the fears, and again, we. The time-wise, we don't know, but one of the fears that uh, the smart people have is when we get to the point where AI controls all the nuclear weapons in the world, which we will get to that point uh, at some level. And if, uh, if the AI decides to unleash this, you know, because again, God doesn't say the, the bowls are poured out but it's symbolic, right? It's not an actual, there's not an angel holding onto a bowl in his hand and he's gonna pour it out. This symbolizes something that's gonna happen on the earth. So to me, it wouldn't be much of a stretch to say, perhaps something God causes a nuclear, uh, you know, a nuclear war where now all of a sudden you know, look at the sores. It talks about sores. Well, what does radiation do to the skin? All right? It destroys the skin. And so you've got, uh, you know, a nuclear bomb that hits the ocean is going to kill most of the life in the ocean in one blast. And all the radiation is going to be in the water. And then all the fresh water is going to get poisoned. Uh, and... Again, all the, the the bloodshed and the and the, the the heat, you know, we're talking heat that burns people to death. That's got nothing to do with Jesus, though, right? That's before Jesus. Right, Jesus isn't back yet. Well, well, this is during the tribulation. By then, right? It's saying that it this is God. Wrath. Now it is God's wrath being poured out by these bulls, but what He uses to pour it out is what I'm saying could be something else, right? Anybody have any uh, comments or anything else they'd like to add to that? Or... Everybody freaked out? Yeah, it, it could <laughs> be also like, like, like with the sun, the destruction of our ozone layer or whatever protects us from the sun. If that's destroyed, then the sun can scorch the earth more and totally alter the you know, the, the ecosystem, the water and the life on earth. Mm -hmm. So yeah. if, for example, we're hit by a meteor or something like that, you know, does it say something in here about the stars falling to the earth? Yeah, that was in the, uh, the first, in the trumpets, in the, uh, yeah. in the seal judgments, it said a third of the earth was going to be destroyed by this, uh, what seems to be a meteor that would come down and, you know, and a meteor is like a major nuclear explosion. Mm -hmm. It basically wipes everything around it out. So Yeah, so maybe something like that too. Right, that could be. It, it's something that definitely takes out the, uh, the ozone layer. 
Hopefully that happens in 6,000 years from now. <laughs> 6,000 years from now, uh, at least, you know, if I ever have a kid, they won't be alive, you know what I mean? So, yeah. I don't know what to say, you know. It's gonna at least be four or five generations from now. <laughs> it's 20, you know what I mean? Even better. Yeah. I mean, I think I'll be long gone by then, but <laughs> you never know. I mean, things are, again, things are changing at at hyper speed. And so, so are they going to try to go like to outer space? You know what I mean? And start trying to live, you know, get out of the world and live in outer space? You know what I mean? We, we are, we've been thinking. programmed for a long no time. No way. What if <laughs> Jesus <laughs> comes back and you're not on Earth? <laughs> oh, he'll get you on a cruise ship on space. <laughs> I think Jesus can find you wherever you're at. <laughs> yeah, a, a different galaxy. <laughs> yeah, well, that's what Musk wants to do. That's why he's he wants to head to Mars and get out of here, just in case. But yeah, as time, you know, again, we don't know the timetable, and you know, by the time when we when we finish this, I'm going to give you all a uh, kind of a timesheet. And we'll go over it to see, you know, kind of some of the things that have to happen so you can visualize it a better way of what we're doing right now, what we're saying. So, but we're almost there. So, okay, so now you got the, uh, uh, all this oh, darkness, God. right? So it, it's kind of, when you look at it, it's, it's almost a literal taste of hell. Okay, all these people are headed for a place that is worse than what they've just gone through. So it's really the uh, the kingdom of great darkness. So then, uh, verse eleven, and cursed they uh, they cursed the God of heaven for their pain and sores. They didn't re did not repent of their deeds. So in in these words here, this verse. We're clearly told that the world will be conscious that the God of heaven is the source of these judgments. So they're going to be a time where they know this is coming from God. Uh, the, in other words, and at this time in, in history, there's not going to be any atheist or agnostic. All of mankind is going to know, like the demons, like James says, that God exists but they still remain stubborn in their rebellion. And so we kind of see the reason that God withdraws his offer of salvation and hardens uh, uh, their stubbornness of their heart to their refusal to repent. So now uh, bowl number six. It says, the sixth angel poured out his bowl on the great river Euphrates, and its water was dried up to prepare the way for the kings from the east. So the Euphrates River here, and its water is dried up. And uh, the purpose is to facilitate this movement of troops uh, of, uh, of the Oriental kings or the Eastern Confederacy that we talked about earlier for this final battle of Armageddon. So this is opening up the area, preparing the place where this final battle is gonna happen. Now the, uh, the kings from the east, or literally it says that the kings from the rising sun, uh, this is a, uh, a, an expression signifying uh, kings from where the sun rises, if you will, okay? Which we know is uh, China, Japan, uh, there's Persia, Afghanistan, India. But I, I think mainly China. I think China is going to be the big culprit here. Because by then it'll be, a, a, it may be the superpower. And verse 13 says, And I saw coming out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet 
three unclean spirits like frogs. So now you got this unholy trinity again, Satan, the beast, which is the Antichrist, and this false prophet who heads up this false religion. Okay, and from them comes out, John sees in his vision of the, these three unclean spirits, he says like frogs. Uh, so it's, <clears throat> excuse me, it, it's God's purpose to deal with the, the nations in judgment in the land of Palestine. Okay, that's where it's all gonna go down. So knowing Satan's purpose and objectives, uh, God's going to use them and his demonic activity to inspire the nations to move into Palestine. So here God is actually going to use these three evils uh, to do his own bidding. Okay? Open up the way and cause them to move towards destroying Israel. Okay? As we'll see in verse 14, so it says, for they are demonic spirits performing signs who go abroad to the kings of the whole world to assemble them for battle on the great day of God the Almighty. So these demons are getting in the heads of the world leaders to cause them to want to come to this battle. Okay? So now they think they're coming to destroy Israel but this is all part of God's plan. God's really in control. So again, these three demonic spirits that proceed from the, 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 this unholy trinity go out into the nations working miraculous signs. Okay? And, and this will you know, somehow be used to act on the minds of these world leaders and the people of these nations to move against Palestine. So there's this lust of the nations for control of Palestine. You know, you know that there have been more battles fought there than anything else. More, more battles have been in the world over this land than any land on the planet. I mean, even throughout the time of the, uh, the Dark Ages and whatnot, that land has been conquered and reconquered and reconquered. And you would think, why? This little piece of dirt in the middle of nowhere. And yet, it has been fought over for centuries. And so here now, uh, God is moving these spirits to get everybody back into the idea of we need to conquer this thing. In verse 15, says, Behold, I am coming like a thief. Blessed is the one who stays awake, keeping his garment on, that he may not go about naked and be seen exposed. That was a little confusing, so I did a little digging on that one, right? So here John is, is delivering a message really from Christ himself. So Christ and his disciples, remember they have often said that that he would come as, that Jesus would come as a thief in the night, okay? Be ready. Some of the parables of the, the lamps and everything else is, you gotta be prepared and you gotta be ready. So, however, here we see it uniquely spoken in the present tense, okay? So these must be signs that his appearance is like right at the door now. Because before they, they, they were basically saying, be ready because you don't know when he's coming. Here they're saying, get ready because here he comes right like right now so I, I think the point is obvious that the lord will suddenly appear and the unprepared will suffer a great disaster so in, in the within the context of the sixth bowl which gathers now the the kings of the whole world together for this war of the great day uh this is really a warning stay away uh, this is the only way to prevent disaster at armageddon is for the kings of the world it, it, whoever comes to this battle is going to die anyone who's there every army that's there every person whoever comes now here to this battle they're all going to die verse 16 
and they assemble them at the place that in Hebrew is called Armageddon. So geographically, it relates to the Mount of Megiddo. And basically, I won't get into the whole area, but basically, you've got, I think it's, this is an area that's 14 miles wide and 20 miles long. And it is the perfect place for old school battles, okay? The tanks and the army and that kind of stuff. I mean, this is like an ideal spot for a battle. And, and that's where it's actually going to happen. And we see uh, Joel, the prophet Joel, talks about this valley. Uh, Isaiah, in chapter 35 and 60, 34 and 63, picture the Lord coming to this area from the south. Uh, and I think uh, Elijah also speaks about this. So, you know, if you take all the all the prophets, kind of put them together, of all the prophecies of who will be there in this war, uh, many believe that this is going to include Russia, uh, Persia, which is modern Iraq, uh, Ethiopia and Sudan, uh, Libya and the African bloc, uh, Germany and Turkey, and of course Egypt and the Arab states. So if you take all the people that all these prophets said would be there, that's kind of your list of the armies that are going to converge uh, for this battle of Armageddon. Uh, verse 17. I'm going to go through it quick, but then we'll, we'll come back a little bit. I want to go ahead and finish. The, the seventh angel poured out his bowl into the air, and a loud voice came out of the temple from the throne saying, it is done. So this, this bowl here is aimed to pour out upon the air. Okay. So the, the, he poured out the bowl into the air. Uh, remember, Satan is called the prince of the power of the air. So this series of judgment, though its final effect is upon the earth, is really a final judgment upon Satan and his uh, domain or his rule over the earth. So we got to keep in mind that the bowls, uh, bowl six and seven, are given in in kind of a summary fashion, okay? These last two bowls, it just gave us a summary of what was gonna happen. And they're gonna be expanded on in great detail in the next three chapters, okay? Where the destruction of the city and the kingdom of the beast uh, is gonna be presented in detail. So bowl six and bowl seven, right now they just told you basically what's gonna happen but in the next three chapters, we'll speak about exactly in detail what those two bowls consist of. Okay? You all with me? Can I, can I get a guesstimation at of what's going to happen? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can guess it. Go back to the last two bowls and you'll know if exactly. Go to the next two bowls. <laughs> this massive destruction. All right. But these are really pointed towards satan and the beast uh, now they're going to be more focused on uh satan the antichrist and the false prophet oh, okay wait i want to say not against the people anymore uh, <laughs> against the, the oppressor right so now verse 18 and there was flashes of lightning rumbling peals of thunder and a great earthquake such as there had never been since man was on earth so great was that earthquake so again, we see flashes of lightning and thunders. And that we saw in the first, remember, in the beginning. Uh, and then another earthquake that we also saw in the beginning uh, during the uh, seal judgments. But now this one is unlike any previous earthquake. This is one that's unparalleled in human history. And, I, and again, that's why I keep thinking some kind of nuclear disaster 
because obviously the very crust of the earth is being moved. And that's, you know, when you think of, imagine a hundred nuclear bombs going off. I mean, it's just, you know, who know, and who knows what the technology will bring in time with, with weaponry, you know? But anyways, so verse, the final verse now, verse 19, the great city was split into three parts and the cities of the nations fell. And God remembered Babylon the great to make her drain, drain the cup of the wine of the fury of his wrath. So the great city that's mentioned here is, is Jerusalem. Okay. And we got additional prophecies that show that. The great city is Jerusalem, and it's split into three parts. Okay, in, uh, uh, in Zechariah, the prophet declares the Lord that two parts of it will be cut off and perish, and a third will be left. And so this is kind of along with that revelation in, Ze in Zechariah. Uh, now the cities and the nations, of course, are the is the world, the Gentiles. Okay, and then Babylon the Great is uh, symbolic of the Antichrist system of government that's going to be destroyed. Okay, so most likely uh, refers to the rebuilt city of Babylon because this city uh, and the name personifies. Uh, the whole system of religiosity, uh, politics, commercial. When it says the great city, the great, Babylon, the great city, uh, it's talking about the world system. Okay, so you got the great city, which is Jerusalem. You got the cities of the nations, which is the Gentile world, and then you have Babylon the great, which is really talking about the religious and political and commercial system that's in place. Verse 20. Wow, there's two more verses. I thought we were done. And every island fled away and no mountains were left to be found. So during this great earthquake, these islands will disappear. Mountains are going to be flattened. So imagine the size of this earthquake. Verse 21. The great hailstones, about a hundred pounds each fell from heaven on people and they cursed God for the plagues of hail because the plagues were so severe. So now you got these gigantic hailstorm that's coming down. So the entire environment at this point, the, ent the entire ecosystem has been destroyed. And you're going from earthquakes to storms to uh, hailstorms to darkness to the sun beating down. I mean, it's just unbelievable uh, natural disaster on earth. But the good news is <laughs> the good news is it's almost done. <laughs> is that for the bad people or uh, yeah, the, the, the normal people are gone? This you just said it's for the, the devil and stuff like that. Well, that's basically what's happening on earth. The next three chapters that we're going to go into are we're going to talk about how God's dealing with the devil, with the Antichrist, with the false prophet, the religious leader, and with the whole system. It's so crazy how, how uh, you know... I wonder if this was uh, uh, orchestrated to be the way it is. You know what I mean? Because if it was just a mistake by the devil, you know, God could have correct that from the rip. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Uh, it just seems like right. so much. Uh, I mean, the, the deeper theological question, right? Which everybody, why did God allow evil, right? Why, uh, why did God put the, put the tree and allow for sin to enter the world? 
And of course, the answer is uh, because without choice, you're not really uh, you're not really a person. You know what I mean? What makes you you is your ability to choose. You can't love God uh, if you're forced to. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I understand that. Yeah, it's like me saying, "Hey, you have to, you have to love me." Well, yeah, maybe you will, maybe you won't. But how do I know? So God knew that the point he inter- the point where he introduces choice into the world, that this was going to happen. But the options are either have no humanity or have humanity, real humanity, and understand that at some point you're going to have to destroy the whole thing. Take the good. But, 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 but that, that was uh, made by God. So right. God made the devil. So, you know, is this just a joke? Uh, uh, one big joke? Uh, oh, I mean, the devil, yeah, the devil was, again, he was an angel serving God who betrayed God. Really, his pride came and, you know. Yeah, but God knew that. Right, but remember that the devil is only half the issue. Our sinful nature is the other half. The devil doesn't make people be evil. The, the devil only encourages it and inspires it. But people are evil because they're evil. So with or without a devil, uh, the end result would have been the same. Well, the devil yeah, yeah, is, the, the devil does have a big play in a part. Yeah, the devil, what he does is he puts the the fuel to the fire, basically. He's the one that's flaming the, you know, he's he's pouring gasoline on the whole thing, and eventually everything goes to to putts, you know. But yeah. that's what's really going on here, and so again, you keep in mind this whole end part seal to bowls is over a seven year period, which in a way is a good thing. Uh, the church is probably gonna be out halfway through this thing at the beginning where a third of the a third of the world goes through a whole lot and we're taken out and then the bowls are released. And that's where a lot of it sounds like the same stuff, but it's a much more intense. And now it's like rapid fire, bam, 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 one after the other. And that's why, again, I could be 100% wrong. You know, but I'm thinking, what would cause the Earth to do this? And I think a nuclear war would absolutely do everything we just read in this chapter. You know what I mean? Uh, between the radiation, the destroying of the ozone layer, mountains being leveled, the sea being uh, poisoned, or water systems being destroyed, darkness, you know, complete darkness, uh, the sun cooking people, all that. Uh, it could be just, you know, God say, so let it be, and it does, right? Or it could be that it is manipulated by man's own evil, evil but the judgment is still there. You all follow me? Right. So, yeah, that yeah. Is, it is the judgment, but it might not just be coming from heaven in the sense that God is throwing, you know, 100 pound hails down on people. It's a cause and effect. There is this nuclear or something like a nuclear thing that happens, and now it's just a domino effect. Boom, 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 boom. It just goes from bad to worse to worse to worse to worse to worse. And now the armies are coming in. And see, even in the midst of all the natural disaster, man is still focused on conquering. You know, they're not even focused on rebuilding. They're not focused on, on surviving. They're focused on still on conquering and killing anything that has to do with, with God. And then their final destruction comes. And so again, next next three weeks, we're going to look at what God, how God deals with those three in particular. There's more to it, but that's going to be the focus. And then it'll wrap up the last two chapters. We'll see how this all ends, 
how the party ends. <laughs> oh, it's obvious. <laughs> it's done. <laughs> There's nothing at the end. Ah, actually there is. There'll be a big surprise at the end if you haven't read the book. So, <laughs> <laughs> anyways, any other questions, comments, anybody? Everybody's good? Yeah. All right. Well, no, let's, let's pray and uh, we'll get, uh, we'll close it up. Lord God, again, thank you for your word. And, Father, it, it can be really scary. I mean, to, the destruction and those who are on earth at this time, Lord, oh my gosh. I just pray that it gives us uh, a more urgent need to, uh, you know, to, to declare the kingdom of God and try to lead as many people as we can, Lord, to you and away from the destruction. Because we don't know when the hour is. Uh, it could be 100 years from now, and it could be 10 years from now, and it could start tomorrow. So Lord God, I just pray that you help us to do our part, help us to stay faithful to you. And Lord, we just pray for for the world, we pray for this country, Lord. As we see our country uh, looking like and acting like those countries in Revelation uh, with this wickedness, Lord, and turning from you. So we pray for our country. And uh, Father, we pray for our church. Uh, pray that you continue to bless it and grow it and help us, Lord, to, to fill your house with your people. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, guys. All right. Good night. Good night. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.